When dioceses are confronted with mounting clergy sex abuse cases, their favorite strategy is to wrap them up in a neat bundle, declare bankruptcy, restructure diocesan assets, and pay victims pennies on the dollar. Church Milton's Christine Chrislieb shows how this process is playing out in the notorious Archdiocese of Santa Fe. The tragedy of it is, sir, that we did not know until recently that this didn't happen two or three times. This happened 25 or 30 times, sir, in my home. The relatively small Archdiocese of Santa Fe may soon be able to close the books on nearly 400 sex abuse cases after declaring bankruptcy. A federal bankruptcy court judge on Wednesday gave all parties until the end of October to raise objections to the $121 million payout plan being put forward. In November 2018, nearly four years ago, the Archdiocese declared bankruptcy one day after police raided the chancery looking for evidence sex abuse victims were being pressured into silence. Father Kirsch, I want to read you what Susan Sandoval says about you. She was 15 years old in 1974 when she took a nap one day on a cot in the office and she woke up with Father Robert Kirsch's tongue in her mouth. This 1993 60 Minutes investigation details cases dating back decades. A clergy sex abuse plague in New Mexico can be traced back to the late 1940s when a religious order was founded to help troubled priests. Servants of the paraclete treated deviant priests and allowed them to serve in local parishes during their treatment. But we mustn't say anything bad about the priests, we'd go to hell because he represented God. That's what makes this crime so despicable. As dioceses across the country close and merge parishes, they also are incorporating merged parishes individually in order to protect diocesan assets from lawsuits. Christine Christlieb, Church Militant Evening News, Detroit. Noted homo predator and former Cardinal Theodore McCarrick is a resident at Servants of the Paraclete's one remaining campus outside St. Louis, Missouri. 